Which one? This is Jane. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, God bless you. Is it James? Jane. Oh, good. The anniversary of the feast days on Monday, the 25th. St. James. St. James. Yeah. yeah. Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, by the light of the Holy Spirit, instruct the hearts of the faithful. Grant us with the same Spirit to be truly wise and ever to rejoice in His consolation through the same Christ our Lord, Amen. Blessed Pauline Marie of Jericho, pray for us in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you for coming for the second of our series uh, during this Jubilee. I'll be talking about Blessed Pauline Marie Jericho, the founders of the Propagation of the Faith, the Pontifical Mission Societies all over the world, and then the, what we have done and the interrelationship between our, our countries, my personal experiences, and what um, the life of Blessed Pauline Marie Jericho is showing to us. If last week and uh, last week's talk was about knowing us, knowing myself, knowing ourselves. This one is going farther. And that's what the, the good Lord says. Love God above all else and then you extend your help to your neighbor as well. So how did Paul, uh, Blessed Pauline Marie Jericho became involved with the missions? Well, she came from Lyon, France. Lyon, France. And she came from a wealthy family, from silk merchants and traders. And at the age of 15, uh, she had a change in her life, a dramatic change. She had a fall. That's why most of the pictures that she had of Blessed Pauline Marie, uh, she is like a, she's like a little hunchback there. Um, but Blessed Pauline Marie, see, it's her fall, see? Very significant. <laughs> she fell. But uh, Pauline Marie Jericho, in spite of that, was able to think of how she could share the love of God. And at an early age, at the age of 18, she started gathering friends to pray the rosary, a set of 10. And each one, uh, when they pray the rosary weekly for the missions, they give a so, S-O-U, so, like a penny, every, every time they meet. And that grew from 10 to 500, to 2000. So this it's like a cenacle of prayer for the missions. The first actually country that Pauline Marie Jericho helped from the missions in France is the United States of America. And it, they, they went to Louisiana, in New Orleans, that's where most of the funds went uh, with the with the money they generated from all those prayers. Because of that, there, there's a, a connection between France and the United States. Moving forward, now it is the United States who has been giving a lot of money to this worldwide fund. And what is this worldwide fund all about? In the Pontifical Mission Societies, there's four of them. Society for the Propagation of the Faith, Second is Missionary Childhood Association for Children. The third one is the for Priests and Religious, Missionary Union of Priests and Religious, the founder of which is a PIME. Are you familiar with PIME? Missionary. And one of the missionaries that's coming here to us first week of August to talk about uh, their mission to uh, the world. And the fourth one is the Society of St. Peter. They help uh, seminarians to become priests. Most of the, the four societies, they are all based in, in Rome. So, but Society of the Propagation of Faith, it, our foundress is uh, Pauline Marie Jericho, and I was at the beatification in Lyon last April. 
she was made venerable by Pope John the Twenty Third, a hundred years after her, her death, and then sixty years later, which is this year, she was she was named blessed. I was able to meet the the girl because of her intercession. She was cured, and it was also the case in which Pauline Marie Jericho was elevated elevated as a blessed. So there are three way there were three, three steps in being a saint. You become first of all a servant of God. They start knowing about your cause, how how devoted you are of faith, and that's where the term devil's advocate comes from. Because there will be an opposing side. Say for example, Jerry, which will be will be, called, will be a saint, a servant of God Jerry. There will be a promoter for Jerry, Jerry's cause. And there will be a, a devil's advocate saying, no, she shouldn't be a she shouldn't be called a servant of God. And that's what they call the devil's advocate. It's a priest or or somebody assigned for that. Do you know that? So that's where the devil's advocate comes from. Again, when you become it's like a contradiction, trying to find out what's wrong before a person could become a venerable, a blessed, or a saint. So it goes through that servant of God, venerable, blessed, and then saint, canonization. So she became beatified, she became blessed. And for that, they, you have steps to go through. There has to be some miraculous cure out of their intercession. Three miracles that happen for saint. But some of them, they, some of them, if you are a martyr, if, you're, if you die for the faith, and there's so many people who profess that you don't need miracles. So for us to be saints, it's good to die as a martyr. <laughs> then you, you zoom up to heaven. That's what I say. I, I, I tell uh, during funerals, remember that? Whenever I, I say that you married couples, you're going to zoom up to heaven when you die. And like me, I'll be staying a little bit longer in purgatory. You know that, right? Because I say, you already have experienced your purgatory or hell on earth, being married, right? No, that's a joke. But anyway, so so th this is the whole thing. Uh, Blessed Pauline Marie Jericho, because because of her zeal, uh, Leon is is very much influenced by the Romans, uh, and they have a they have rivers there, which is a center of culture and commerce, and so be, because of her intercession, this this girl was cured. Um, she was there present. In fact, we were trying to get her and her family to visit us during our conference in San Diego. Uh, was it last month? Um, but they, they weren't able to get it because of the, the time constraint. But so we have Pauline Marie Jericho, and then came a bishop from France again, and thought about her. His name is Corbin, and saw the need for children helping children all over the world too and that's where the second political mission society came came into existence the missionary childhood association this is where fulton shin archbishop fulton shin is venerable um supposed to be blessed uh, from peoria and they, they they dug his body out of saint patrick's cathedral remember archbishop fulton shin and then transferred it to he had those pagan babies remember that when we were growing up yeah, those pagan babies. So the missionary child organization, same thing. Ten children, pray for your fellow children all over the world. Then you, you give them money, you give them your support. So that's how it all happened. The, the, um, all these four mission societies, it's now called the papal mission societies, Pope Francis societies actually, because it, it's now based in Rome and we have everything, all the directions coming from the Pope. Now, here in, in the United States, we have a national director for the Political Mission Society, this is based in New York, and then we have the different dioceses, we have their own mission directors. Your humble servant is the diocesan director for, for Trenton. And you might, you might think, how did it come about? Mm, you came from the Philippines, you were ordained for the Philippines. I went to study here in Maryland, but I was incarnated, that's what you call incarnated in the Philippines. What's incarnated? It's like a citizenship, a religious citizenship. So if I transfer to Trenton, I have to be excarnated from Philippines and incarnated here. Right? So it, it comes from the word cardo, in the hinge. You have to be 
hinged somewhere. So you have to be unhinged from Philippines and hinged to Trenton, yeah. I won't become a pastor if I'm not incarnated here. Seldom do we because of that. But anyway, so 2001, I came back after 11 years in the Philippines because I took kind of law. And there's no divorce in the Philippines. What's the use of taking up canon law if you have no divorce in the Philippines? I can practice my, my JCL, my license shape. So I worked in the tribunal here in Trenton for four years uh, about annulments. I was the defender of the bond and the promoter of justice, all those legal terms. And 2005 was transferred to Bayville, uh, St. Barnabas in Bayville, as a parochial vicar, but still a junk priest, they call that. You're not yet incarnated. Then 2007, I was assigned to St. Charles Borromeo and became a pastor after I became incarnated. So I was there for nine years. In my stay there, I became friends with two priests. Who was, he is the vicar foreign, you call it, and the Episcopal vicar. Usually in the organization of the diocese, the bishop, the vicar general, is like the second man to the bishop. Then you have Episcopal vicars of the four counties in Trenton, Burlington, Mercer, Mammoth, and Ocean. Each one of them has an Episcopal vicar, they call it. The Episcopal vicar for Ocean is uh, Father from Visitation, Father Ed Blanchett. The Episcopal vicar for Mammoth is Monsignor Rossi. Monsignor Joe Rossi. So we have a new Episcopal vicar in Burlington County, Father Riley, the, the cover of, of the monitor holding the Blessed Sacrament, he's the Episcopal vicar there, and the Episcopal vicar for, for uh, Mercer. Now I forget. I forgot. But anyway, so, so the bishop, vicar general, Episcopal vicar, then you have vicar forings, deans, they call it deans. Then you have assistant deans, assistant to the vicar for it. So when I was in Cinnamon, I was the assistant dean, the bottom of the line. <laughs> then a friend of mine was Father Ryan. He was the dean or vic vicar for it. And then the Episcopal vicar was the funny. Three of us always go together for a bishop's meetings and all the things. So we became friends with each other. They took me under their wings because they're a little bit older than me. December 24th of 2012, Father Ryan died. He was about to celebrate the midnight ma the, the vigil mass for it, December 24th. Four days after that, the bishop calls me, would you like to be the dean? Oh no, bishop, no, no, I can Would you like to be the dean? <laughs> okay, bishop, okay. So, my name changed because I became a dean. Instead of reverend, I became very reverend. And at the end of my name, there is a comma and then VF. But the big, so what's VF? It stands for Vicar Foreign. I said, very funny or very Filipino. That's what it means. So, so I, I became the dean of, of, of Northern Burlington Deanery. Eight months after that, Monsignor Tofani was found dead in uh, in uh, Florida. He is the director of the missions for Trenton. These two friends of mine, they're always good to, because it's like water and, how do you call that? What, vinegar and, they don't, yeah. I, I was like the, the, uh, the dividing force. Father Ryan always talks. Tofani doesn't, you know, he's always very gentle. He was the director of the missions for 26 years in the Diocese of Trenton. He died at the age of 61. And so we had we had a funeral and all this. September, oh, he died in August, September. The bishop sent, uh, like, who would like to become a director of the missions? I have no interest because I, my field is not in missions. My field is in canon law. Well, one evening, one night, in a dream, these two men appeared to me, and to funny who doesn't talk, PJ, you take the job, I'll back you up. So I called up the bishop, and the next day, 
He says, well, I think about it. Two days after, he says, are you still interested in being the director of the missions? I said, sure. Then I told him about the story. He says, oh. And then I told him that I'm killing my friends to get their jobs from Father Ryan. I became the dean from Monsignor Tufani. I get the director of missions. The bishop says, you're not getting my job, are you? I said, I hope you're not my friend <laughs> or something like that. But it, it's, it's a great way. But it's a, it's a blessing in my ministry as a priest. And from then on, it, it really made a big difference on the way I look at missions, giving, stewardship, loving. Because I think I'm like Monsieur Tufani always says also during the time, he's the luckiest priest in Trenton. And because of this job that I'm holding right now, I feel also that I'm the luckiest priest in Trenton, not because of the places I visit or I go to where the bishop sends me, but because of the, the number of people, the realizations, the misjudgments that I have of, of people, of places, of food, of things, then you realize, no, this is what Pauline Marie Jericho was really talking about, the universality of the church. We are all one. We all have the same needs. So, one realization when I was in Africa, have you ever seen a, a, an African wearing sunglasses? No, right? Have you ever seen an African wearing hats? No, because when I was in East Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, the three of them, I, I, I went in three weeks. It's cool. I thought it's warm. It's cool. It's in the, in the 50s. It's beautiful, actually. That's why they don't... They didn't. So one of the misjudgments that I have about Africa, I thought it's really very warm, very hot because of the sun. It's a beautiful environment, except, of course, you have to take on the security. So that's how I ended to become the director of the missions. And from then on, I was in charge of, of sharing the gifts that the people of Trenton has been giving. And we have been very generous. Uh, Trenton has been very generous in, in, in our monies, in giving it to people. So 2013, when I first became the director of the missions, Remember the typhoon that devastated the Philippines and killed a lot of people? Typhoon Haiyan? Do you remember that? We, we got close to one million from the Diocese of Trenton alone. And then I, I was there and brought that, that, that amount of money. But that's, that's just one of the generosity that we have here in Trenton. And every year, every summer, we had what we call the Mission Appeal. So we're, we'll be having the PIME, P-I-M-E missionary, August 6th. And right now, they have started since June to August. In our 97 parishes, we have different missionaries giving talks. And then our people from Trenton giving them money. And, and it, it's very fortunate to say also for me that we are in the top 10, in fact, top 7 of the givers in the whole United States. To, to the national fund, to the national office. So it's a great testament to what we do. The, what, what we have, of course, is you have less stuff, you have less expenses, and then you have more contributions, and that's what you share. So with all, with all this in mind, I, I have a lot of different experiences in the missions. Uh, once I was in, the, was it Masai Mara in the safari? Wearing, wearing this, it says, that's so you'd appreciate my, my bush jacket, whatever this is. They had to live in a tent there in the safari. And I heard about two o'clock in the morning, a very distinct noise of a lion and a hyena, because you could really hear their, their cries and all these things. And then I saw a flashlight. Why would it? it there's, no, there's no electricity. They cut off the power around uh, nine o'clock in the evening. So they only have flashlights. So why are they flashing their lights on my tent? I'm trying to be asleep, but you hear the sound. Oh, the next day, during breakfast time, they told me there was a lion and a hyena outside my tent. They were all, that's why all the growling and all this. Thing. I could have been a, a human uh, dinner <laughs> that evening. But those are the things that, but you know what? In every place I visit, uh, I've been to, the span of time, probably seven or eight mission countries. There's no, there's no fear in my, in, yes, I know. I'll be protected. And there's a, always a trust in God that happens. 
So the first one that I did was Papua New Guinea. And the bishop was here during our picnic. His name is Bishop Santos, right? Rolando Santos. This is the, where's Papua New Guinea? Papua New Guinea is in what continent? Oceania. What, what, whenever I tell the, the kids this, oh, what's that? Where is that? It took me four days by plane to get to, to Papua New Guinea. JFK to Tokyo, the Philippines stopped over, Port Morrisby, then furthermore, uh, it's, uh, they were under Australia before. So in fact, Bishop, um, Bishop uh, Santos cannot reach his diocese unless he flies because there are no roads going to his diocese in, in Alotau, Sedea. The nearest church from the cathedral, which is in Alotau, is about four hours by boat. So the farthest that he has for his parish, I didn't go with him, is two days and a half on a boat. So whenever he does pastoral visitation, he, he, he spends two days and a half just on the boat itself and then gives confirmation or, or blessings to the, the people there. So he says to me the first time he, he did that, he was throwing up because of the, the waves and all this. You know Solomon Islands? And all this so that's where most of the action happened during the second world war uh in papua new guinea you know rockefeller the the son of, Rock, of rockefeller the youngest son got cannibalized there his plane just crashed and then they couldn't find his body in fact they have it in national geographic so when i was there were, I, I did some tears it was my first trip to papua new guinea and then uh they called them headhunters <laughs> so they only they always have two kinds of of knives the big knife and the small knife the big knife because the, if, there, if there's no way they make a way through, through the um, through the bushes the small knife or be beetle beetle nuts they love to chew those and it's good for their teeth and it's like a kind of um the, it's like a make make you eat some more uh, appetite yeah, you know the be beetle, B-E-T-E-L? Beetle, it makes your teeth, when you chew it, red? Yeah. Huh? No, that's pistachio, the, the beetle nuts, B-E-T-E-L, beetle nuts. So that's what they have. Um, but, so I, I, so I went to Alotau after four days, then the bishop sent me from there, Bishop Santos, I had to fly again to the farthest island that they have, it's called Kiriwina. Kiriwina so far, but a beautiful, beautiful environment that their money in circulation sometimes they depend on, on just leaves as their form of tender. And uh, so when I was there, they thought there's this missionary, I thought I'm giving money away and all these things. <clears throat> so I had a meeting with the village chiefs and all these things. And I said to them, I'm sorry, I'm not Bill Gates. Well, how would they know about Bill Gates? There's no computer there. Um, the the uh, what's this? The electricity is cut off. Whatever they have, generator power, and even the, the water is coming from the from the from whatever they have in the rain. I said, "Oh, I'm sorry, you don't know Bill Gates. I'm not Santa Claus. Why would they know about Santa Claus? So there's no point because they don't know about Santa Claus and all these things. But it, it's Kiriwina Island is also famous, not famous or notorious, because there's during their um, harvest season, they think that that being pregnant comes through the spirit. So they have a lot of animisms. They believe in witchcraft there. So during harvest season, it's a free for all. Anyone could enter anyone's house and harvest, do a harvest. Because so if you get impregnated, it's not because of a union between a man, male or female, but it's because of the spirit, the animist who, who did that. So during the harvest season, a lot of foreigners go to Karimina <laughs> and thank God I did not go during that harvest season. It might have been difficult for me to explain, no, uh, uh, no that, that doesn't happen that way. But the, the evangelization is great. Um, I had masses there too and they were all in their, in their costumes and their traditional garbs. And you, you could just imagine the joy. If Bishop Santos, yeah, have you talked to him when he was here? 
He's been there for about, I mean, you talk to him, right? He's been there for about more than 15 years now in that, in that diocese. Previous to that, he was in Fort Morris, the capital. And yet you can see the joy in him. He was here to give mission talks. And hopefully he was able to get some contributions for his own diocese. But just, he's an inspiration in fact, because of what he has done. Imagine, he is not from that place. He learned the language, just like most missionaries do. Uh, that, that makes you think about the Jesuits in the past, to China and Hong Kong. And there's a lot of things that missionaries do, which we really haven't re uh, really appreciated in a way because we don't know what it is. So, prevalent among the Papua New Guineans is traditional tribes in the belief of Maasai or evil spirits, which are blamed for poisoning people. So when there's a catastrophe, they blame the evil spirits. So they, they are more into superstition. Second place I visited was India. Uh, India because of Father Dason from, from Red Bank, and he brought me to, to Taj Mahal, even Taj Mahal in Agra. Uh, Taj Mahal and then Kerala, then we went to the border in Pakistan. But Kerala, which you take three hours by plane from, from New Delhi, it's where most of the priests come from. So I think Monsignor Pocheri comes from Kerala, or if not Kerala, the one I said, Tamil Nadu, and they have a lot of vocations there. In fact, we were there for the canonization ceremonies. They were already canonized in Rome, but they had the ceremonies in, in New Delhi. And if ever there is a, a vocation surge, it's mainly coming from Asia, especially India. Missionaries of charity, of course, you always have uh, the sisters from India. And if you ask them where they're from, Kerala. So at, at least you know the keywords now. You, 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 would, you would get in the convent. What's the, what's the password? Kerala. You're from Kerala? Yeah, they could come in. Sure, you come in. But uh, India is, is great also. Uh, next one I did was Mongolia. Where's Mongolia? This is Mongolia. 25 years they didn't have a local priest. Most of their priests came from different countries. Mongolia produced its first local priest in 2018, 2017. And I was there for the ordination. His name is Father Joseph. So it, it was great to see the people of, of Mongolia. And they have a, the lamb. It's like a fatted calf. They have a fatted lamb in front as, the, as one of their centerpiece for the ordination. Mongolia is only very minimal Catholics because most of them are are Buddhist, are Buddhist. But again, do you know now? Do you know where Mongolia is? Mongolia is in Asia. Next to it is Russia. So that part there, remember the Genghis Khan. All right, I'm I'm gonna go somewhere else. After, after Mongolia, Madagascar is supposed to be. Madagascar is the only island of Africa, the coast of Africa. I wasn't able to go because at the time they have a plague. And then, so I called the bishop and said they cannot go. I was about to, to fly the next day. And then it was canceled. And Nepal. So of all, of all the flags in the whole world, Nepal is the only one with two triangles. So this is a good jeopardy question. This is Nepal. And where is, the, where is Mount Everest? Nepal. That's where you start. And that's also the, the most difficult airport to land, I think, because it's surrounded by, by mountains. So what, when you land there, and then when I was there, actually, we, we had this, I did, that's where I got the, the mask. Because it's surrounded by mountains. The city has a lot of dust. So all of them are wearing masks to prevent themselves from the, from the dust. So Father Joe, a burial priest, was my host. And then we went to the, the place where the earthquake happened in, uh, that, before that. And uh, the, the devastation was so, so different that it really disrupted families and all these things. Uh, most of this, you know, I, I was able to participate and, and be part of the mission because of the way, you know, it, the good Lord has, has given us things to share. And I think that's why I consider myself one of the luckiest priests. And, and the last ones were Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, 
and then you all saw also the, the, the Ugandan martyrs, from, are you familiar with that? The Charles Luanga and Companions, it, it's presented in November, yeah, and then of the three, they, they, are, very, they are very much also uh, alive in their faith. I have a video when I did the Blessed Sacrament, and then everyone was you know, shouting and jumping. Oh, you, then I sent it to my to my parishioners. I was in Long Branch at the time. They said, "Oh, how I wish our parish is like this." You know, everyone was shouting, and I was scaring them. I said, "Sacrament, it's full of people. Beautiful. Even mass, the mass that they have, they have procession. And when they bring up the gifts, oh, I would love to have you, the princess, to bring up the gifts because you have to dance." It will reach about 30 minutes from that door up to here because everyone's dancing. It's about three hours. It takes three hours to do a mass there. And it, it's beautiful. Uh, East Timor, by the way, was the last one that I had before pan the pandemic. East Timor is um, an island just created, a country created about 15 years ago from Indonesia. And that was the last one I, I when then the pandemic struck. But all this, uh, we, we are all participants in the way the good Lord has shared that different kinds of, of things. Now, I have the, all these props just in case you would like to see. I have this one from Nepal, and, and the men always wear it. You, you know, images of Sokarno or Soharto, right? Are you familiar with it? In Indonesia, they have this. They, call, they have a copy here. Um, now, this is the rosary that is made famous by Fulton Sheen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this to you when he gave it to them. So, we'll be doing, every, every decade actually has, has a continent to it. So, the Archbishop Fulton Sheen uh, really carries the recitation of this World Mission Rosary way back. The, the, So I don't know whether I'll be able to get the different, uh, let's get okay, different colors. So, oh yeah, sure. Oh yeah. It, it's a yeah. yeah. I'll just it. The yellow I think is for Asia. The missionaries in Asia. The blue I think is for uh, Oceania. Ocean, Oceania and the Australia. The white, I would say it's Europe. Red is Africa. And green, I think, is us. Or maybe it says it's Americas. So, so the five, the, how many continents are there? Seven. So only seven out of five are represented here for the different continents in the world. That's why the colors are uh, for, for what they do. But, um, so, personal thoughts, mission reflections. What, what is really our mission? Well, just the good Lord said in Matthew, towards the end, before he left, what did he say? Before he ascended, go out into the whole world, right? And tell the good news. And what's the good news all about? That they, that they came for us. So that's the whole point of the missions. And, and it's not only me as directing the, the contributions we have or the sharing we have to people who are in need. But it's each and every one of us is called to be a missionary. Say, uh, Pope Francis said something beautiful uh, this morning and it was, it was printed in the mission uh, uh, newsletter. We have a lot of photos. It's, he says, for Wednesday, July 20th, the Lord always changes our life. Because those who receive Jesus feel they have to imitate him to do as he did, which was to leave heaven to serve us on earth, and they came out of themselves. So if we ask ourselves what our task in the world is, what we must do as a church in history, the answer of the gospel is clear. Mission. To go on mission, to bear the proclamation, to make it known that Jesus came from the Father. Because actually the first missionary is Jesus. He was sent from the heavens to the earth to tell us what we need. So it's, it's a great experience when you get a time or anything 
uh, anything about the missions. Beautiful. We, we've also been, although not part of the mission trip, I also took uh, my, my deacon from West Long Branch uh, in 2020 or something like that to El Salvador and Guatemala. Are you familiar with these places in South America? In El Salvador, they have a lot of they have a lot of killings, martyrdoms, especially the Jesuits. And in Guatemala, there's Sister Ortiz. Uh, she was a sister. She was gang raped. And then, actually, it's a beautiful uh, it's a beautiful journey of faith. She just died last year. Um, if you, if you could get her name, she's also on YouTube. But you know, with that experience, she was. Uh, Kidnapped, abducted, and then gun raped, and then she had a baby. And then she had an abortion. Then she left the church. She left the ministry, everything. Got angry with God. She came back. She came back no longer as a sister. She came back to church and she died from cancer, ovarian cancer. But her story, I, I would I would pray that she will become one of the saints in, in our era because it's a great testament of how it is. So when we were there in Guatemala, you know, all priests and deacons around this area were praying. On, we are praying on holy grounds and all these things. And the priest who was guiding us says, actually, gentlemen, this is the place where Sister Ortiz was abducted. So, oh my gosh, this, it's a holy place. But there were many places there too in El Salvador and Guatemala. The testaments of the missionaries who have spread their love. Um, one of my fellow seminary, uh, he was a bit older than me, his name is Stanley Rother. He, he is now blessed, Stanley Rother. Oh, he was, uh, he was killed in Guatemala. He was a priest from Oklahoma, and then he decided to serve there. When he died, the people asked that his heart be buried in the church where he was. So when we were there, we, we prayed on his tomb. Well, actually, we, we slept on next to the room where he was uh, killed and assassinated. You can still see the, the blood there. And you know about Romero, uh, Bishop Romero, Archbishop Romero. You know Archbishop Romero, he was saying Mass. Uh, he was very good in... Uh, oh, you, you, get, you get Stanley? Or, oh, oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah, good. Blessed Stanley Rother. Yeah, he is from Mount St. Mary's. This is our pride, the blessed Sunny Rother. And he became a, became very close to the Guatemalans. One of our priests in the Diocese of Trenton, his name is Monsignor um, Vince Gartland. Is is you know Vince, yeah. He he does every year mission work for the people in Guatemala in a in a diocese called Quiche. So he, he asks people to be aware of what they what they need because of the root of persecutions there, especially for religious and missionaries. So thank you for this. How did you know him? Oh, from Ben Salem, yeah. Yeah. Can, can I just circulate this so that they could see? Um, that's a, it's, it's, a, it's a modern market. I have a lot of those. Yeah, and, and, and Romero. Oscar Romero. You haven't heard about Oscar Romero? Uh, Raul Julia, uh, you know Raul Julia, right? He, he made a movie out of Romero. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, uh, the title is Romero, and he was he was against the government. Just a small petite archbishop, but very much vehement, you know, and very simple, no no ambitions. And then while he was saying mass there, they, somebody just shot him, and then he he fell while saying mass, while he elevated the. Yeah. Archbishop Oscar Romero, and they always quote him, especially. Yeah, yeah you got, you got it. Who did you, who did you look for? for Raúl Julia? <laughs> yeah, but there, there's a lot right now. There's a lot of of missionaries actually who who are out there, and that's why I consider myself lucky. <laughs> Not only I'm here in the comfort of of this church, but uh, there's a lot of missionaries out there who are risking their life every day for for spreading the gospel and following the mission of Jesus. So that's, uh, that's the sharing I could, I could relate with you. But um, always good to realize how we can be of help to people and how could we could be of better service. So that ends my presentation for now.
the next week I'm going to talk about the how to get out of the mass it's um it's the liturgy of the word uh, for the first part and the second part is the last one the liturgy of the Eucharist we have to know more about uh, about the mass sometimes we don't appreciate it or we just don't realize it uh, the different postures we have and how we have to prepare for it so how to get the most of the mass and people say I don't get anything from it well what are you putting into it you know if you don't put anything to it you won't get anything out of it well you have to put something you have to put some kind of an investment you have to put some kind of your time you know and uh, probably I'll also share something about people living after communion <laughs> that will be in the second part <laughs> so there, there's so many there's so many mistakes that we do at mass but we could also rectify it in many ways it's just a proper attitude that we need to do you know say you know so there's a lot of things that, that, that could we could talk about a preview i put it on, on the bulletin so letter m it starts with mass right so the top most the two of them that's for god the three of them can you see it that's for man so you start from entrance you go up to God, glory, opening prayer, second M, down, readings from God, first reading, second reading, gospel, the lowest point, homily. Right? <laughs> it should stop. So that will be the that should be our topic next week. Then it goes up again. You see the M? It goes up again. I wish I could have something here like a black boy next week. So we'll we'll, we'll get something. So the second one is oratory. And the second apex of the M is consecration. Then everything is downhill from there. And then I said, I said it also in my letter, that the M doesn't just end with an M, it has a little curl. Because it has to go out. That's why the priest or the deacon always says, go and proclaim. That's what the Mass is. You have to go. You're not just confined here. You have to go and spread it. You spread what you learned what you heard so that that's like a teaser all right any questions about the mission yeah please uh, you know what here just to be precise about it I have all the colors and here I'll give this to you because you you have um, you have you have Stanley Rothery yeah here's the brain the world mission rosary uh, then I'll, I'll give you the different colors. So, eh, it doesn't even have the colors here. It doesn't have the colors here. Yeah, I'll find it out for you. Yeah. But it, yeah, that's yours. Yeah. This is called the World Mission Rosary. The, yeah. And I, I usually give this to children when I give uh, mission talks, and because they like the color. So when, when you say, "Oh, wait, which one are we doing this time?" We say, the "Blue, them red, or green." Okay, let's have a vote. Who wants them green? Who wants it? It's beautiful when they have the children talking, and then then we pray a rosary in, in in their honor. Every continent. I think the white. What did they say before? Huh? Asia. Yeah. yeah, I think Asia is yellow. I want to be precise. I forgot about it. Buddhist Philippines? Okay, green. For the forest of Africa, red for the fire of faith that brought missions to the Americas, blue for the oceans surrounding the islands of the Pacific, Oceania, yellow is Asia, and then what else is missing? White is Europe. Yeah. Why is Europe? Yeah. Uh, Fulton Sheen was the one who did this. I mean, really, really shared it with a lot of people. And you can just remember if you are familiar with his talk, 
first of all the angel, but then he has this big globe, right? This big globe, and he 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 so in his in his uh, TV broadcast says we have to help all these children, we have to help all these say the pagan babies and blackboard also or the angel yeah anything else my dears hope you'll be here next week because i will be sharing something about the mass <laughs> I, I i haven't really planned because of the of the what's this the 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 covid pandemic but uh, i am in contact with the, a, a bishop from zambia whom i met in lyon and it, it's another beautiful story. You, you know, you know, you're guided by God when, when things happen for something for a reason, and then you just know about it. Well, I was waiting for the taxi, and you know, everyone's already left in Lyon, and it's the where the beatification was is about an hour from the city proper. I don't know how to contact a taxi. They have the number there. I tried to contact the number in French. So, how would that? In, in French, no Uber. There was a lady there listening to me. You want me to help you? So she was the one who contacted the taxi company to take me from there. There was a bishop who was sitting next to us, and he was been waiting for his taxi. <laughs> but he said, "Oh, bishop, you know a bishop because they have the cross here." He said, "Oh, bishop, how long have you been?" <laughs> he says, "I've been waiting here for about 30 minutes now." And he doesn't know how to get his own hotel to. He said, the, the girl, could you, could you help him also? So she did help him. She helped me. She brought him to his hotel. So when I got back here, he wrote me an email. He says, thank you for your help. You're my, you're my angel because you, you negotiated or you, you made it happen that I could go back to my hotel. And then I said, sure. And then Bishop, I said, I gave you my email address. If, if you happen to come to the United States, visit us here in Trenton. And then he says the same thing, um, come visit us in Zambia. He's a, he's a young bishop, he's about the, in his 40s, 40, 45, yeah, from, from uh, Africa. So some of those, but it, it depends. Uh, right now with all the things that's happening, it's, it's hard because uh, you, you just could, you just couldn't fathom that what people are, are having, are sacrificing. We are very blessed here in the United States. We are very blessed here in the United States when we, when we see ourselves there in relation to them. We just don't know the extent of our blessedness. You know what I mean? And, and I have been part of that. Not only the comforts of life that we do, but the risk involved in being a priest or a missionary, especially in other countries. So it's... It, it's so hard to explore. It's really a missionary heart that keeps them going. And that's, that's, the, big, that's the big hit of it. They have the desire. And you know, so, yep. Oh, the dolls. I, I got this from Nepal. They, they sell this in, uh, in, in uh, the streets. So I, I got this for, for the kids. Whenever I make presentations to the kids, I bring it with them because it's colorful. And that's like what you said, what are, what are those here? In, in, the, in my presentation also with, with the children, I have, a, I have a video, I have a PowerPoint of, of the children I took when I was in Papua New Guinea. And, and they started in, in a land so far, far away. And then one of the questions said, is that real what you've been talking about? You know, because they, they think the, the number of the hardships that they have, um, it, it's so, so they, they live in different islands. The teachers, of course, cannot go back home at the end of the day. So what happens? The teachers, the principal, they all live also in the same island. They, they only go home. And the same thing with the students because they come from different islands. So in that main island, that's where they have their education. And you have the money if you, you, know, if you could go to that island. The main mode of transport that I have been in Kerewina, it's a small boat, it's like a paddle boat. And so if you need some groceries or some salt or sugar, you have to manage it yourself, go to the big island on your own little paddle boat and get your your provisions if you have the money. Yeah. 
the diocese? How many parishes does it have? About 20. No. Yeah, 20. 20, 20 parishes. It's so far out, yeah. It's so far out. Yeah. And yeah, it, it's... Uh, I, I went with him for a confession uh, in, and confirmation of already big kids, of course. Um, and, and they're good, they're good. They're beautiful. Yeah, when, one, once I, I was met in that island, in one of those islands, and they are dressed like traditional. So the women, they, they have, they are, what's this? They, they're, they're naked up, yeah. And they're putting the, this garland on me. I said, no, no, I'll, I'll pick up the garland, I'll put it up. I won't bow down here and then get the garland from you. You get what I mean? So they gave the garland to me. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, they, they are so beautiful. The, the pure faith, pure faith. The one thing that I had, what, that I had there at four o'clock in the evening, I was already at, um, back to the rectory or the the priest home, the priest house, because you know it's not not that safe, and they don't even know me, of course. You know, somebody different from them. So that's what happens to when you're a missionary. You're plucked out of something comfort in comforts of your homes, and then you're thrust into a place where you don't know the language. The culture or even what's going to happen in africa um they have dogs uh in in the houses i stayed with they let out the dogs at night that serves as their security so they uh, they really have the dogs uh, like like car dogs so huh no people away or, or robbers or thieves yeah but i also have a lot of uh misjudgments of people. When I was in East Timor, somebody met us uh, in one of the malls there, and then the priest says, she wants us to go, come with us to their home. I was looking at this lady. Like the way I judge people, oh, oh, oh. well, we go to their home, oh, yeah. she's, she just like, she just came from a place you don't want to know where. When we got back to her home, it's a mansion, gated, they have a chapel inside, very religious family. But look at that. See how, 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 how we judge people sometimes. And I, it happened to me many times. It happened to me many times. And either for good or for bad, you know? And you just don't know. It's the, the, the lack for me is the exposure. The exposure and the realization to the faith. How faith is sometimes expressed, even from people whom you don't even think that they have that kind of faith. So uh, in India, I have visited people who are mentalists, you know, and then they were showing, he was showing to me, he was giving it to me, this painting of, of Jesus. So what do you do with that? Should you say no? Yeah, you know. I told you this, my story of the banana in the Philippines when I was still a young priest. I'll probably share it in the, in the homily. You, when I was still a young person in the Philippines, at the end of about three masses on the Sunday, this lady came up to me with a bunch of bananas. I was thinking, where would I get this bunch of bananas from her? She needs it more than I do. She owns a little store, she's giving me this bunch of bananas. She said, no, thank you, thank you. Priest, happy passing by, says, take the banana. Because it's like an insult. So from then on, I'm taking anything that's given to me. <laughs> But that's also, you know, you know what, but, and then I felt that way. Because it's humbling to ask for money. But it's more humbling to receive. To receive money, to receive something, right? Because it, it, there's a need for you that probably I need to have this. And the pride in me saying, no, you probably need it more than that person. So there's a lot of things, uh, beautiful, beautiful things. Like, like recently, I have a friend from, from Florida who stopped by. And this will be my last story for the missions, not really about the missions, but how people are given to us by our Lord, uh, not according to our own wishes, but there is a plan. There's always a plan that, that He has for you and me, and we should never forget that. Well, I was a cruise ship chaplain. I have uh, many hats in my life. I am a cruise ship chaplain. I say mass for the cruise. I have a, I have a free room. Uh, I, I draw a window because there's no window. But uh, so I, I only celebrate Mass once, once a day. And then if there's somebody who needs an anointing and confession, 
then I, I go. But you know, it, it's a nice way to relax. So I did that. I think after Easter in in St. Charles, I also do that sometimes, from time to time. But here I was in the elevator about the same mass, four o'clock in the afternoon. This guy says to me, "Who are you?" <laughs> I'm the priest. What are you doing here? <laughs> because here you see all those people in, you know, uh, having fun, you know, having fun. Yeah. Every day he attended Mass. And then after, before we left, before we parted, he says to me, tell me about this Jesus you're talking about. <laughs> so I, give me an address. So I sent him the Bible. I, said, I cannot read that crap. So what he did, he bought the CD. So he said, his name is John. I said, John, I'm going to Israel. Would you like to come with me? Oh, well, what would I get there? He's a follow my, he's a follow my way Catholic. He, he was a big, big guy in Philadelphia, a lot of money and all this. Now he's deciding in Florida, retired. He, has a, he had a nephew. His name is Brandon. Brandon has a girlfriend, graduated of Georgetown, and the girlfriend says, your uncle is a cuckoo. I'd like to get his DNA if you're really related. Well, John says, Brandon, you want my DNA for your girlfriend? Come with me to Israel. So they came with me, Brandon and John to Israel. Coming back, broke up with the girlfriend. Now Brandon is two years shy of being a Jesuit priest. You know that? And ever since, you know, John has been visiting me this past weekend. He was here at St. Uh, uh, Veronica's. He stayed with us. Uh, he introduced him to Father Chan. But wherever I am, he visits me in the rectory. He's been with me to Israel twice. He's been with me in Rome when I, I did my sabbatical. He stayed, with, he stayed in a different hotel. I was at the NAC, North American College. But it's a, it's a beautiful story until now, the friendship that we were able to get just from Cruz in an elevator. Yeah. He said, I said to him, probably it was sent to you. He said, no, you were sent to me by God. No, it was sent to you by God. You know, so it, it's great. He was here, he has a convertible. So Peter Bernal, that Bernal last Sunday says, oh, you have a convertible. Say to me, and Father Chan, and so Father Chan told him, no, that's Father Preacher's friend. He just left his keys, everything there, easy pass, doesn't care. So what's happening? Somebody, it's open, no one will steal it. That's how it was, you know. It, but great people you meet in life. And probably you also have your own stories. But it's how the good Lord has really, you know, patterned it. He's a character. When we were in Israel, he said, why are your people having pictures with John? So he told people he's a movie star. <laughs> he's the classmate of, of Sylvester Stallone. So the waiters and the waiters were having pictures with him. Why are they having pictures with John? <laughs> but uh, I, I would love it. He, he was at the 12 noon mass. Were you, anyone of you at the 12 noon mass? Last Sunday. Yeah, he, he's, yeah, he stood here. Yeah, he, great, great guy. Were you at the 12 noon? Last Sunday? Last thing, yeah, he was sitting there. Huh? No, last Sunday, last Sunday. This past Sunday, no. The two Sundays ago, that was the fair, yeah. He, yeah, but, yeah, God bless him. But anyway, so any other thing? Thank you all for coming. And yeah. And hopefully one of these days also we will have mission stories that you could share. You have different experiences probably also with missionaries. So we'll just have to give it trolling. And you know, one lady approached me this morning. Was it you? It's at you, right? Asking questions about the faith. I said, we'll start that in September. You know, different questions about the faith about cremation, about, you know, uh, different questions, like, is Judas in heaven? I can answer most of them, like, you know, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> what do you think? Is Judas in heaven, friend? <laughs> you know my favorite story? My favorite story, everyone was happy rejoicing the last judgment. Jesus standing in, in the door, why are you, you there? We're all happy here, we're all excited, singing, all these things. It's, it's, we're all in heaven. I'm waiting for someone, Judas. 
Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. To us in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May divine assistance remain always with us. And may the souls of all the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much for coming.